uh, Schleck put the Thunder in here. The Thunder are playing for the play in. They're playing for the 60. They, they don't yeah. count anymore. That rebuild's the rebuild done. Is done. Yeah. Welcome back to Point of Contention. Five topics, five minutes, five points of contention. I'm Zach Harper. We got Andrew Schleck producing. Coming up on the show, are there any West contenders? Paul George goes down. Jalen Brown leaving town. Great in the rebuilds and towns and Edwards back in Minnesota. Also, welcome to those of you watching on YouTube. Subscribe right now. Go click the little athletic NBA show name there. Click subscribe. Right there. It's right. It's like it's like th- it's one somewhere. of those. Yeah, one somewhere there. there. Go click it right now. If if you're not watching on YouTube, it sounded like weird audio, but you should go to YouTube and subscribe. You can watch us talk. What's better than that? Also, what's better than the bouts? The essential NBA newsletter to your mailbox for free every damn morning of the week, Monday through Friday, written by yours truly, and you get some actual good stuff from Sham Strania in there, as opposed to me just babbling about, I don't know, MVP or something like that, or whoever's in the tournament still. Uh, hey, today, March 23rd, National Chip and Dip Day. Marcus is still getting his coffee, so Will, I will ask you, what's the best chip and dip combo? Oh man, I gotta go chips and queso. I'm not a guacamole Ooh, guy. Queso, that's a, a good call, man. I'm a, I'm a chips and queso guy for sure. Whenever I go to the to a Mexican spot, I gotta get me some chips and queso. That's a must. Yeah, the queso can be kind of a dangerous game though, right? Because if the queso is just not right, it has like that little weird film on the top that you gotta break through and you gotta stir it up yeah. with the chip, and then that chip's gotta go, man. You can't trust that chip once you, you once you stir that, that up. Yeah, you gotta toss that one, but then after that, you're good to go. Guac also like so I would I would probably go chips and guac, um. But man, I've had some bad guacs before. <laughs> That's some real <laughs> bad guacs before. Like you gotta you gotta make sure that thing is authentic. Yeah, I'm on the other end. I've never had a good guac. I'm not a oh, gu- I'm not a guac guy whatsoever. Okay. Get that green stuff out of my face. I don't want any part of any guac. For sure. Yeah. I I think uh you know if you're going at home if you're playing at home. Does a does a seven layer bean dip count as like an actual dip, or is that cheating? I'm a seven layer bean dip guy. I, I, I definitely approve that one. I've had some, yeah. some good seven layer dip before it, for sure. It's weird you never see that out in the wild. You can only buy it at the store to come home. I know, right? You never, yeah. you never see it. Like, yeah, let me order some seven layer dip while I'm at the spot. You, you yeah, you never see that. I've never seen that on a menu before. Maybe they just put it on chips and they call that nachos. Uh, All right, let's get to our two contestants. If one of them will ever join us in this corner from the Paris of the South, the best beat writer the Big Easy has ever produced, the author of the future book, the pick swap that wasn't the one, the only Will Gilry. Will, what's the best food that New Orleans has to offer? Oh man, we just bringing me here to get the food corner, and mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. A New Orleans guy talking some. You have food. a purpose, brother. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm here. Uh, nah, I gotta go. Uh, char grill oysters, number one on my list. If you Ooh, had char grill oysters in New Orleans, it'll I'm, change your life. You know what's and messed going... up, Will? Can I say something that's messed up? Uh-oh. I developed an allergy to oysters in my thirties, oh. so I've had them before. They're amazing. Can't eat them. That anymore. that is such an awful take. What do you mean? Are you serious? What do you mean it's an awful take? No, he said char grilled oysters is the what? best thing out of New Orleans. Dude, they're I'm, amazing. I'm they're I'm amazing. Saying. I mean, I, I, we're talking about what are you going, Paul Boy? Perhaps the world's best cuisine. And you come with like an it's appetizer. A, it's a pretty good cuisine, right? Listen, there, man. Yeah, you can have you a lot of them. I just expected so oysters. much more from you, Will. Come on. And I, well, I, I had, a, I had a, a second option up here. I got char grill oysters number one. Mm-hmm. And I got not just any old gumbo. I got my mom's gumbo number oh, two. Oh, wow. Don't get gumbo from wow. any spot. You got to mm-hmm. get a family member's hey, gumbo. When you get home, yes, yes. Family member's mm-hmm. gumbo. That's, that's the uh, top five for sure. Marcus, what do you what do you like in New Orleans? Crawfish etouffee. There's no other place in the world you can get this good. What I love <laughs> what I love about New Orleans is no you other. Can, where can you get it? Where else? Literally, give me another spot. Yeah, what I love about New Orleans is you can be out drunk at a bar 2 a.m. and then all of a sudden someone working at the bar is like, "Hey, we got some crawfish in the back. You want some?" And that and like and there's the next three hours. <laughs> it's the only city in the world where this happens, and it's why it's probably my favorite U.S. city. It's just yes. because of that. Drunk at a bar, stranger goes, we have crawfish in the back. Do you want some? 
What are is there another city you can go to just for food, like nothing else? Just go and eat, like people go shopping in Milan for fashion, right? <laughs> um, yeah, not off the top of my head, not like Austin New Orleans. barbecue or tacos or something. You go for the coeds too, though. <laughs> <laughs> and in this corner, <laughs> no comment. In this corner. Marcus Thompson. I'm not doing the whole intro. You weren't here. You were you were getting coffee that was burning. Apparently, it's Marcus Thompson by his books. Uh, Marcus, coffee what's the best, on fire? What's the best food in Oakland? Ooh, that's a tough one. Oh man, I it's not actually appetizer. Oakland food. It's our versatility, right? It's like international, right? Like you, you know, what I'm saying it's it's not Oakland food. It's like you got great Mexican, you got great Cuban. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. so with that said, I'm gonna go with a burrito truck. <laughs> a good <laughs> just any of insider for the real any of them yeah oh man yeah there's some good ones there all right that's enough banter you can tick that box schlack start the clock are there any real west contenders the bucks current favorites to win the nba title according to bet mgm with other teams in the east like the celtics and the sixers also with high odds I'm curious the West have a team that could actually beat one of these teams. Healthy Suns, the Denver Nuggets, the Warriors, Marcus, hmm, anybody else? Can you think uh, the Clippers could get it together? Any of those teams, Memphis, Sacramento, Will, I'll start with you. Um, anybody in the West that you legitimately think like, all right, it's this team versus the Bucks. It's this team versus the Celtics. It's this team versus the Sixers. I got this team. My uh, my initial reaction when I read the question, honestly, was Memphis, uh, just because with, with Ja coming back, and I, I really kind of like Memphis all year, but I feel like with all the Ja stuff going on, we really haven't soaked in the fact that just Brandon Clark is gone now, and mm-hmm. Steven Adams probably will be gone for a and, minute. And Dylan Brooks is still there. And Dylan Brooks is That's still tough, there. Yeah. So uh, I think – you know, a big part of their identity was just the way they beat people up and the way they attack the offensive boards with those big guys and just them not being there. Uh, I feel like that's tough. And, uh, you know, I, so I, I'm probably scratching Memphis off my list. If I'm being real, man, it sounds crazy. I probably got to throw Phoenix up there. <laughs> Even yeah. though KD isn't healthy, we don't know what they're going to look like, but I just feel like you plop KD on the floor with Book, with CP and Aiden, with Monty coaching, and they'll probably figure it out. Uh, you know, I'll just put them against anybody. And I'm like, if I see KD and Book out there, I feel like they got a damn good chance of winning. And I feel like if they do pull this off, it'll be one of the craziest stories in NBA. If this dude plays three regular season games and then comes <laughs> back for the playoffs and they end up winning the West, I feel like that should be the new rule. it will be like, for just throw away KD's current contract. I want to see every year KD's like, I'm announcing what team I'm signing with mm-hmm. on April 1st, and we're going to win the championship. That's I what I want to see. I love the idea of mercenary of KD. Absolutely. Um, Marcus, the Warriors going to do it? The Nuggets? The Kings? It's got, you know what the craziest part is? Like, out of all these teams, I believe in this team the, the least, but I think they got the best chance of winning it all. <laughs> The Denver Nuggets. Oh, come on. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't believe this. Get out of here. I, no, like everybody else, it's like major, major question marks, right? Mm-hmm. Like you could say the Warriors, if Wiggins come back, if Gary Payton is right, like it, you could say like Phoenix, if KD is healthy, right? You could even go Clippers, if Paul George is not hurt. Like everybody is like one hot run away where you don't want to write them off because we've seen them do it. And Denver's like, yo, we roll, like we got full squad. Like we ready. Yeah. So like, they're the most realistic chance, but they also got maybe not winning the title. Three straight MVP. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. And like, in the center of it all. It's, and it's, they're probably the most disrespected out of all of these teams. Right. right? Yeah. Like, yeah whenever we have this conversation, them. everybody's no, going out of their way to Denver. not pick the Nuggets. That's why yeah. I'm going with Denver because they run away with the one seed. Like, and, and everyone's like, nah, they, this team doesn't matter. Yeah, nah. But like, th- their like make a run, get hot at the right time, click feels the most realistic out of everybody. Right. If we were we were putting this down on Bet MGM, like, who's got the the best odds like they're not waiting for somebody to come back right they're not like hoping no yeah they're just like yo this is this how we've been rolling for a while right and the other option the other team you can say that about 
is the Kings. And it's like, which one you really think of? <laughs> well, the, well, I mean, the Kings are a really bad defense. Um, oh, they're awful, right? They, mean, give really up 126, they give up 126 points to a team missing three starters. <laughs> to a jazz, like Laurie Markin and his other side having a party. Like, whoa. That's what I'm, what I'm saying. Like, Denver is the yeah. most. You know what? Denver is like, it's like, yo, I could, I, I didn't really get into Harvard, but I'm not going to community college. What's a really good state school? Like a safe mm-hmm. pick. Mm-hmm. Like that's Denver, right? I'm gonna go have a nice, you know what I'm saying? Like, Cal I'm State Northridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, gotta, that's Denver. Like, probably yeah. got like a good engineering program or something, yeah, you, know you know? Like, yeah, you, you still gonna make it? It ain't mm-hmm. sexy, but you're gonna be all right. Like that's Denver. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I I do I do worry about Jamal Murray's health because he he doesn't look all that healthy to me like i kind of think like just shut him down for the next two weeks and then have him come back and see what see what's what and their defense is a little suspect as well uh but yeah maybe it should be denver uh, well will's still denver's also just in this thing like it's like the bucks a couple years ago where i'm just like nah you gotta do something in the playoffs before literally got you that, like, that it's way like the same right yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> same. As, and as much as we like their starters i feel like their bench i don't trust any of those dudes like when you start bringing in like Christian Braun and Thomas Bryan. I'm like, all right, I don't know if I can. You know what the dudes. crazy thing is? You know he pronounces his name Christian Brown. Brown, yeah, that's right. I knew that, that and is I still unacceptable. It wrong. I refuse. <laughs> yeah, I'm with. It's Christian Braun. You spell it B R A U N. That's not Brown, buddy. That's there Braun. Are no O's or W's in there, my man. Mm-mm. Oh, is that Mm-mm. a Brown? You know what's troubling about Denver, and that's that kind of makes me pause is they're like a very I mean, the Warriors are a terrible road team. Denver is not a good road team. Like, yeah, yeah. they got are they going into Milwaukee, into Boston and winning? Like that's with Michael right, Brown. Like, but I don't know. at that point, hey, they made the finals. And exactly, right? You know, like, yeah, that's yeah, a successful they season. As they get to the conference finals, I'll be like, all right, they're like, hey, this man. is good. I'm just going to find and, me a good wife who loves me, have a couple kids. I'm going to go get a nice job. Like, I'm going to Denver this thing out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's sorry. Sorry, Nuggets fans. I'm the staying out the streets. Like, the I believe in you, Denver. Yes. All right. Um, Let's move on to take two. I Paul to the Warriors in the second round. Paul George. <laughs> Paul Warriors George's in a weekend injury. fling. Don't make me laugh while I'm talking about Paul George's injury, all right? That's messed up. Tuesday night against the Thunder. About four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Paul George's right knee collided with Lou Dort's leg. Kind of looked like a hyperextension. Had to be held back to the locker room. He left the arena on crutches. Uh, It's a shame because the Clippers were playing really well. And PG just did a 360 dunk in a half court set. That was nasty. Like that was some Vince Carter stuff right there. We don't have an update as of this recording from the Clippers yet, but Marcus without PG, let's say Kawhi Leonard is completely healthy for the rest of this run, but without PG are the Clippers sunk. See what you like. Yes. Clippers a ship. Yes. Clippers sunk. They're done without. Oh, PG. wow. Wow. I mean, what, what are we talking about? Championship? I'm Let's worried. say conference finals. Nah, nah. That, like we, I mean, did we just not watch Lou Dort lock up Kawhi for the, the final man. possession? I'll see to Kawhi it. Hey, it was, oh, I'll see to it. Goodness, Kawhi's like, my guy, and I'm like, Ugh. and it really wasn't like it really wasn't a Kawhi thing. It's like who do you have belief in around him? Right, and you just took away because I think he looked around and was like, yeah. right, "Maybe I pass this, get this back." He's like, nah, "Not him, did. not Yo, him, not him, that. not him." All right, shit. You I'll cannot go. tell me that's not what he was thinking. You can, all right, give it up and get it back. Nah, yeah. I'll go. No. He just, and then he just ran out of time. I literally think that's what he was thinking. Like, but, but first, can we just talk about and Zach? You gonna feel me on this? Come on, man. We need playoff P, man. Like, we need uh. playoff P. We like we is this podcast. We, we yes, as okay, basketball. okay, okay. We need playoff okay. Pete, man. Come on, this dude produces. He produces buckets on the court. He produces well, moments. Unless Joe Ingles he produces is there. stuff to laugh at. Like yes, there we go. Like he's great on the pod. You see, hear him on his podcast. Like he is actually good. Like he's like saying stuff. Oh, it's you mean crazy. podcast Pete? We'll get plenty of podcasts. Podcast Pete, yeah. Like some I cringe hope, quotes. I, I, I hope he's banners a guy with some in cringe Indiana. Quotes. <laughs> Banners in Indiana. Division <laughs> banners. Division banners. This is one of my favorite. And I think Indiana it was like banners, two bro. of them, man. Like it was remember, 
Remember my, my MVP favorite. season when yeah, I finished yeah, third in MVP? MVP? <laughs> I, I hey. love this guy, yo. I first. love watching him play. I love yeah. listening to him. Like, he is hilarious. And, uh, like, 60% of it is unintentional. But we yeah. cannot lose this guy right now. We That's cannot lose point. this guy right That's now. That's a great man. Come point. Come on, P. I love this dude, man. He's the best. He literally, he was talking on his podcast. He, I mean, who says this? I was telling my homie, I'm about to lock Steph up. I got him tonight. I got him. And then he's like laughing about Steph gave him 50. He's like, of I course he did. Nothing. But nobody says that. Like, nobody's like, can you imagine Westbrook ever admitting, yo, I'm about to shut him down? Well, but he did that. Out, I couldn't do nothing. He did that with Ricky Rubio and it didn't go well. But uh... <laughs> oh, man. I love oh. I love Paul George. Put that on the record. We cannot well, lose him right now. Well, can you can you see a world in which the Clippers without a healthy Paul George are just dragged through to the conference? Let's just say conference finals by Kawhi. Oh, you muted. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, did my mic go? Yeah, go for it. You're good now. Yeah, yeah. My, my, I, this is a wrap without PG, man. They, they're just not like, like we started out the convo saying they just. When you see Kawhi out there, he can still put up numbers. He can still make a a lot of really good plays, but like he's not the the Toronto Kawhi. He's not the guy that's gonna carry you through three rounds of the playoffs. So I just think, and then when you look at the rest of that roster, it, it's just like they got really good role players, but you you ain't winning three rounds in the West without you know PG there to kind of lift. Kawhi up and I think the other thing is like we we all kind of was, was scratching our head after the Russell Westbrook move and I feel like when Russ and PG play together it kind of works right because those guys know how to play together PG likes when Russ pushes the, uh, the the pace and he's able to get some easy buckets and I feel like Kawhi is more of a walk it up let's play mm-hmm. half court let's kind of take advantage of some mismatches and we know that's just not Russ game that's when yeah. people start standing 10 feet away from Russ, begging you to pass him the ball. And that's when you see all the weaknesses in Russ game. I feel like all of the good parts of Russ game come out when he played with PG. So, yeah, man, I, 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 it was really bad seeing that injury just because it happened so late in the season. You always think about how does that affect next season uh, for the Clippers. And then the other thing with the Clippers, yeah, this ain't a team that's, that's hoping they can make the conference finals. All of them picks they gave away, they gave away Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's fighting for first team all NBA. That's a team that's championship a bust. And what they got going on right now ain't championship uh, as far as what I see. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think that I think the, the, the standard has changed by now. <laughs> I think they'd be pretty happy with a conference. I'll, I'll let Paul Paul George's <laughs> podcast be the judge of that. I'm not going to let you put those. Remember limits my on. championship season. Remember his championship season. Round? Yeah, remember that. Remember when he was he was you know enshrined in the Hall of Fame because he had 27 points in a game. You know, remember all that. Don't forget. Yes, that. that's playoff. Don't peak. forget it, baby. Playoff. Uh, all right, let's take a quick break, fellas. When we come back, is Jalen Brown long for Boston? Back after this. Today's show is brought to you by Morgan & Morgan. For more information, visit ForThePeople.com slash NBA show. Did you know that in 2020, there were over 5 million car crashes? That's over 15,000 a day. 600 an hour. Now, that number is incredibly shocking. But if you were injured in an accident, wouldn't you want to be made whole? Well, if you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers. With over $15 billion recovered for clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is extremely easy, and it's more like using an app than hiring a lawyer. If you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, Go to ForThePeople.com slash NBA show or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R-ThePeople.com slash NBA show or pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. This is a paid advertisement. And we're back. Take three. Brown leaving town earlier this week. The Ringer published a profile on Jalen Brown covering everything from his time at Cal to his disagreements with Kyrie while with the Celtics to his long-term future with the Celtics franchise Brown, while he didn't say he was going to leave Boston, he left a little room for a little uncertainty Brown on how, how long he'll be with the Celtics quote. I don't know as long as I'm needed. It's not up to me. We'll see how they feel about me over time and how I feel about them over time. Hopefully whatever it is, it makes sense, but I will stay where I'm wanted. I will stay where I'm needed and treated. Correct. 
end quote. Marcus, is this a meaningful quote? Is maybe his friendship with uh, with Kyrie going to lead him as Kyrie left the, the Cavs to explore things on his own? Is the contract extension in which he is now incredibly underpaid by his sta- by star standards, is that going to lead to him saying, give me this new TV deal, Max? I think the hope is that this like terrifies Boston and to say like, yo, let's pay him. Let's pay him. Let's pay him. I just wonder for his sake, does it work against him? Right. This is like, Oh, well, if he's going to (laughs) leave and then, you know, like, I mean, this is two pieces, right? Like, like he's a little bit on the media tour. Mm -hmm. There's a very clear message from him. Like, yo, I will bounce. Right. Which is a great negotiation tactic. Great tactic. yeah. Yeah. It's like, Hey man, I will leave. I'm, I'm good. I can walk away. I can do this. So that might be the end of it. I, in the end, I do think they pay him. In the end, I do think they say, man, like we're not doing better than this. But at the same time, you can see a world where they're like, look, if you don't want to be here, <laughs> right? Like we could, we could send you to Dallas with your boy, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, go, <laughs> like you go kick it. You know what I'm saying? So, and you know, Dallas is one of the teams that he's been kind of linked to anyway, right? Just mm-hmm. sign his fridge. So I don't think it is, but it is definitely interesting because it is very clear. Like, if he's gotta go, he will leave, right? Like he he got yeah. businesses to start, like he got black people to kick it with, and like Boston ain't providing all of his needs, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, what are you saying, Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying Boston is it the holistic location for Jalen Brown's ultimate desires to be more than a basketball player? Mm, Ooh, that well, was pretty good, Will. That's bar right hey, there. Hey, so. That was good. That was good. Ain't a whole lot of Dr. Umar's running around Boston for uh, <laughs> for Jalen Brown to kick it with. We can say that much. But no, I, I, I like I just like Marcus said, I respect what Jalen Brown's doing right now with his little media tour because I think he writes to say, hey, I'm a legit Max player and I'm tired of y'all playing yeah. with my name. Hey, Will, you can't do this, Will. You can't be like, I respect it and then call it a little media tour. No, nah, that's 100% a, what you can do. No, nah, that's it was right. Two, nah, it was two pieces. It. it was like, you know, yo, I respect your little media tour. It's a little media nah, that's, tour. That's the right, that's the right tone. You know, because it it's like, man, why every time a trade come up, y'all got to throw my name out there if I'm Jalen Brown? I, res- mm-hmm. I respect him being like, hey, I'm averaging 27 a game. I'm an all-star. I'm an all-NBA level dude. Stop acting like y'all could just throw my name up every time KD peek up and say he want to trade the man. Like, if y'all really respect me like that, if y'all feel like I'm a part of what this team is building, then why does my name keep coming up every summer? So I can respect Jalen Brown being like, you know what? Hey, that's a world where I just bounce on y'all. It ain't y'all choice to get rid of me. I will just bounce on y'all. And I, I can, and you know, if you're Boston, it's, we can say, hey, we'll just let Jalen walk. But that, I don't think that's the world they want to live in, where it's mm-hmm. Tatum and Brogdon and, and Marcus Smart You're trying to win the East. When you got Giannis with his super team over there, you got, you know, Philly getting stronger. I, I think they need Jalen Brown just to keep up in the east so i think he's doing the right thing saying hey stop putting my name in these trade rumors when it's time to pay me my supermax give me my bread and and if you're boston i think you got to respect his mind because if you let him walk then it's the same thing we do with all of these other teams once one star walks then we look at that other star Mm -hmm. and start saying all right what's up with tatum is he gonna stay in boston so i think it's a scary time for the celtics because the bucks have passed them up Philly's probably about to pass them up in the standing. So uh, I think they're kind of on the downward trend. And now this stuff is coming out with Jalen Brown. How much is this going to be a distraction? Uh, you know, Joe Mazzula ain't exactly the guy that the Celtics fans are in love with right now. That, uh, that shine went away real quick. Quick. Yes. So real that interim tag left. It was <laughs> man, it was out of there. They started calling him the clapper, like Jason Garrett. It, it, it was it's rough out there in Boston right now. Uh, it, so they better win some games because I'll tell you this much about Jalen. He'll bounce, just like Marcus said. He ain't one of these dudes that's mm-hmm. like, I'll stay around just for the team chemistry. I feel nah. If he's he if he feels like he's not wanted, he'll dip and, and not even think twice about it. The amount of throwing poison into the well that other GMs are about to do based off this quote is gonna be spectacular. You're gonna see wild rumors about the Celtics and Jalen Brown over the next year. I promise you like wild rumors about like getting him away and stuff like, and I don't even know how much any of it's going to be true. It might be little kernels of truth, but I'm telling you the next year is going to be chaos 
for Celtics fans. Unless, unless they come out and say, yeah, we're going to give you that super max as soon as you hit free agency. Because they can't sign an extension unless they fix in the CBA. They can't sign an extension because it's not even close to the amount of money he's going to get. Not even close. Like, he's about to get stupid paid. And the uh, money he's earned. I mean, he's made a serious jump this year. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the last two years, he's been – he's way I mean, outperformed yeah, his, his contract. His, yeah. his, fi- his performance in the finals alone, that was like cha-ching. Mm-hmm. Like, cause Especially as Tatum good. came up real short. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> coming up after the break, confidence in rebuilding teams. Today's show is brought to you by Indeed. Visit Indeed.com slash NBA show 22 to start hiring now. What's better than finding quality candidates? Finding them instantly. For a powerful hiring partner, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. If you hate waiting, Indeed's U.S. data shows that over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates who resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Indeed knows that when you're doing everything for your company, you can't afford to overspend on hiring. Visit Indeed.com slash NBA Show 22 to start hiring now. Just go to Indeed.com slash NBA Show 22. Indeed.com slash NBA Show 22. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Take four. Rebuild gone wrong on Tuesday. Our own Kelly Eco and Sam Vecini wrote about the state of the rebuild in Houston. If Jalen Green can be franchise player, the recent good play from Jabari Smith Jr., that's a new thing because he's been pretty terrible this year. Shane Goon's impact and more. At the end of this piece, this question was posed to Sam. What's your confidence level in the success of this rebuild on a scale of one to 10, 10 being extremely confident and success means getting back to the postseason in the next three seasons guys, clearly in the next draft and particularly this lottery will have a lot to do with how you feel about any rebuild, but this year's draft aside, how do we feel about the Rockets rebuild will on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you in this Rockets group? Yeah, I love just the the fact that the the ten is just getting back to the postseason where you could be like the ten seed and making it to the playoffs. And hey, man. Where we, playoffs, so we, playoffs. <laughs> let's go for the ten seed, everybody. Let's open. Let's let's shoot for the stars. Do you know the amount uh, of improvement they would have to have to get close to the ten seed right now? Uh, that's a fact. Because like, I, I would just literally watch, like twenty games though. <laughs> yeah, I just watched two Rockets games in a row, and it Ooh, was that rough. is rough. That it is rough. rough. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna give it a four just because only reason I give it that much is because I like Jalen Green. I feel like mm-hmm. they hit on the Jalen Green pick, he's gonna he's be good. good, but I hate everything about what they're doing in Houston, it's just the way they just have a team full of like a it's just like an AAU team, it's a bunch of young dudes, they out there doing whatever. Shingoon's just throwing up random shots. I don't know what they're doing with Steven Silas if that front I, they they're like convinced James Harden is coming back to save the day That's a whole a bunch of them thing, down there. Man. That's a weird it's just, thing. It's so weird what they got going on in Houston. I don't like anything they're doing. And and <laughs> if when Benyana goes there, I, I would be really depressed because I, I feel like I just want him to go somewhere <laughs> with more organizational, just a direction. Of, like we know what we're doing, we know where we're going. Yeah. And if he goes there, it'll just be like. Just take 25 shots, Wimby, and we'll, we'll see what we can do next year. Marcus, scale of 1 to 10, how do you feel about the Rockets' rebuild? Eight. Whoa! Wow. You got I, – I can't believe you're missing the epicness of this tank here. Like, this is this is choreographed chaos that's happening. You are so asleep on what's going down in Houston right now. Mm. Look, if they get Wimby Yama and, like – a veteran on the team somewhere, maybe oh, somebody over 25. A guy with a beard. It, even if, yeah, I'm just saying, like, think about that. They are, they've gotten so James bad. Hard, James Harden cannot James, be your veteran president. No, he cannot. No. He cannot. Especially not in Houston, right? No. Not in the East. I'm going to show y'all. And boy, he'd I'll be like, y'all don't know wing. about the old spots. Let me take you to the <laughs> tell you. And Wimby can't hide in any of these spots. If you see nah. a big 7-4 dude walk Mm-mm. in the spot, you're going to notice him. They are... Like they're in play for the biggest like draft prospect in fifty years, right? They are uh, uh, like 
a, like if you're a veteran NBA player and need a like a revival, mm-hmm. like Houston is perfect for you. Like you're gonna get the ball, you're gonna get leadership yeah. roles. Like you just uh, ask John Wall. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not oh, not I, I'm saying it like you still good. You just oh, like, like not oh, like don't do that. I've been gone oh, for two wow. years. John Wall. Wow. John Wall's good. Nah, he was I'm, great on Theo hey, He better than Justin yeah. Patton, all right. I'm just saying, like he was there's a little the, further down the, the road than what the, I'm talking we about. The line of demarcation. Are you yeah, better right, than yeah. Justin Patton? <laughs> <laughs> He's a little bit further down the road than I'm talking about. I'm talking about you know yeah. thirty, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, like, like an Eric Gordon. No, it's was too far down the road. <laughs> <laughs> too, too far down the road. I just feel like they're they're like in position for somebody to come and say, "Yo, I could make something out of you." You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like I can, I could do something with you. Uh, and and, I, and when it come to uh, when it come to Texas and Florida, we always gotta throw the taxes into into mm-hmm. the discussion. Yeah, these dudes making thirty million a year. You go to one of these states where they ain't taking all your money, it plays a factor. We yeah, that does. Yeah. Well, you know they throw a bunch of money at Jalen Brown. Yeah, I'm just saying. Maybe, maybe him and James Harden. No, him and Wimby though. No. No, no, no. You can't do that. You can't do, you can't do that. Uh, <laughs> let's do some quick hitters here. Scale of one to 10. Will, how do you feel about the magic rebuild? I, think I like Paulo and uh, and Franz. And I think, you know, I, I just question what they got going on at point guard. I know magic fans are going to hate it, but I, I like Paulo and Franz. So that's a good start. Um, Marcus, magic, one to 10. I'm high. I'm high. Let's yeah, I'm go. a 10, man. Paulo's a, yeah. a a monster, Franz a monster. And you know what they have that, like, I mean, Houston actually has it, but I think it's more like what Will said. It's like, man, that's like straight EBYL. That's good <laughs> right? Like, they just out there. Tari Marco Fox still plays like that, man. It, yeah, he's been he in the does. league for a while. He's just doing whatever he wants. But Orlando has an identity, though. They are mm-hmm. big. They are yeah. physical. They play hard, right? Like, yeah. they've got an identity. Now they just need some pieces, like, in the right place, but that team has been ain't who's skinny on that team? Like they don't even have a skinny <laughs> dude. Yeah, they don't. Oh, no. oh, Bo is like the skinniest yeah. dude they got, right? We, we of can, course, we the can, one skinny guy is like that. seven four. We can stop with Bobo, right? We don't have to do this anymore. No, nah, we can't. We we gonna keep good. doing it too. He's we not gonna keep doing it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Schleich put the Thunder in here. The Thunder are playing for the play in. They're playing for the sixty. They, they don't yeah. count anymore. That rebuild's rebuild done. Is done. Yeah. What about the Pistons? One to ten, will. I got him incomplete just because I, I haven't seen Kane Cunningham have enough. Y'all don't get a grade. I got to see Kane Cunningham play basketball games before I give y'all a grade. Why so y'all got an incomplete. Cool, man. Right. Nah, yeah. man, you got to complete your assignments for you I get believe a grade. Kane Cunningham has played fewer games through his first two seasons than one Zion Williamson. Oh, wow. That's a low bar. Actually, that reason. might not be true because I think Zion yeah. missed the whole year, but it's close. It's close. Yeah. No, played that's 12 not games good. this year. Uh, yeah, Marcus, he played like twenty in his first year. Yeah, Marcus, what's the, the, like the terrible Pistons for you? I was like it too, but they got James Wiseman. They up to a good four oh, now. Boy. Let's go, All right. yeah. James Wiseman, baby, the big man that they needed. You know, it's a bad sign for both me and the Pistons. Is I saw that Mar- Marvin Bagley the third had thirty last night, and uh, and I was like, I was like, oh god, this this it, for some reason in my head it clicked that Wiseman had the 30. I was like, oh, this whole conversation is about to be so annoying it's on the internet. All, and then I was like, wait a second. No, it's that's still going to be. It's still going to be. It are it's it is off 16 and 8. So watch <laughs> watch when he actually gets a 30. When he actually gets a 30? <laughs> oh my God. They're gonna burn the chase. Everything he does, Warriors fan. Ooh, Joe Lakeham. Joe Lakeham was right. This is Steph Curry's fault. Like people are going crazy. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at First Leaf. Visit firstleaf.com slash NBA show to get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. Imagine this scene. You're at the crowded supermarket cruising the wine aisle, feeling lost, intimidated, or maybe you're just tired of always buying the same stuff. You want to explore, but you don't know where to start. You need to try First Leaf. Here's why. As America's most personalized wine company, First Leaf takes the guesswork out of wine selection. It's super easy. You just take their short taste quiz and you rate the first few wines that they send you. Then First Leaf is going to use your responses to curate a customized selection of delicious, award-winning wines based on your personal preferences with 96% accuracy. Sign up today, and you'll get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. 
Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash NBA show. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash NBA show to get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. Tryfirstleaf.com slash NBA show. Take five. Back in towns, our own Shams Tarania reports on Wednesday morning after missing 51 straight games with a grade three calf strain that was initially reported as a four to six weeks return. Minnesota Timberwolves star Carl Anthony Towns will return tonight versus the Atlanta Hawks, barring a setback in pregame. Sources tell The Athletic nine games remaining as the Timberwolves battle for playoff positioning. The Wolves also listed Anthony Edwards as questionable for Wednesday's game. Timberwolves got a much needed win on Monday against the Knicks, thanks to a nearly perfect Torian Prince game, 35 points on 12 shots. But the news of their two stars returning couldn't come at a better time. Wolves sit at ninth in the West as of this recording with games against the Hawks, the Warriors, the Kings, the Suns, and the Lakers upcoming. Marcus, after these five games, are the Wolves still in the hunt? For what? Uh, Playoffs? Top six. Top six. They're like a half game back. Nah. Wow. I don't think so. I think it's a big nah. game against the Warriors coming up. They Is do. it on the road for the Warriors? Nah, nah. It's a, it's a, it's oh, it's that chasing. Center. Okay, it's so that's a, that's a loss for the Wolves. And if Carl Anthony Towns is playing, that's definitely a loss. Uh, oh, don't, should don't I say that out loud. Don't Take it, my bad. Him. I'm sorry. That's 51 games in a row. That's why he's going to be trash when he gets oh, back. Okay. Do you, Will, what are the chances Carl Anthony Towns comes back in the best shape of his life? I would say with a calf injury, not high. I, I see him on the sideline. He's not coming back from this. Shit, <laughs> How long is he gonna take to get in basketball shape? Like he and I have the same jawline right now. It's not. Yeah, like I had a, it's not looking <laughs> good. Then you got the whole like Rudy was chilling, man. Rudy was living his best. Rudy's life. playing wild, well, man. Yeah, Rudy's Rudy. like playing really that's good done. basketball. That's done. That's uh, over. Like that's yeah, out. That's <laughs> but with with the two bigs on the court, Ant's gonna have plenty of room to operate. Right? No, no, nah, no. Uh, well, at least at least Tori and Prince will get more. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, Kyle Anderson's been really really good, so you can still play him at the four. No. Yeah, play him a point, might as well. Yeah. yeah. See, that's where I was going with it because I feel like low key, the Timberwolves are kind of uh, like made an identity without Carl Anthony Towns with you know playing Ant, Jaden McDaniels, and Kyle Anderson together. Mm-hmm. I feel like they kind of figure something out with those three dudes just being long, athletic, making some plays in transition. Anthony Edwards was able actually to get into the paint and not have three people on top of him every time, which was an interesting way to play basketball. Especially Uh, when two of them were his teammates. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And now (laughs) he's going to have two bigs out there. They're going to want to get Carl involved. They're going to start running these big, big pick and rolls again. It's like you're basically just starting all over with 10 games left in the season. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm not that excited about it. I never was excited about Towns and Gobert playing together. And yeah, I, I'm just, it's, of course, I mean, Towns is a super talented player. You want him on the basketball court. It's just a weird fit, man. It's just a weird fit. It yeah. never was really that great of a fit. And y'all saying go back playing well. I, I can't lie. I saw a stat the other day that Walker Kessler has twice as many blocks as go this season. It's like not more, but two times as many blocks as go which Yeah. Is- Crazy. It's, you know why? Because yeah, people man. actually challenge Walker Kessler. They know better. Yeah, they're afraid of Gobert. Go Gobert. Yeah. They're afraid of Gobert. How you many come, shots you come, you come into the paint against Gobert, you're getting baguettes and blocks. They, you know that. <laughs> you, come on. You better be ready. That's truffle butter, baby. Wait. Mm-hmm. You're slipping. Mm-hmm. You're going to get caught slipping in the truffle yep. butter. You come in the paint. Yeah, yeah, Lee Towns is gonna come back jacking a bunch of threes because he's gonna that, be out well, of shape. That's so. what he should do, though. He's a he's a historically good shooter. Like historically good. He's like 40. <laughs> you don't think he's the greatest shooter he's in a, all time? He's a historically I, solid shooter. No, he's 40% <laughs> first. I mean, he just went real, he's a historically well, because here's the problem is like scoring's out of control now, man. So like is, you gotta be like 46% to be great now. He's 40. He's 40%. That's historically good. And I think, you know, no offense to Chris Finch, 
who's done a great job. He's the second all-time winningest coach in Timberwolves history at 98 victories. That, you just cannot promo that stat. You can't promo that I can't that say stat. it enough. I can't say no, it I'm enough. No, I'm saying if you're the Timberwolves, you That's just got to let that You ride. can't you let, that, let that ride. Yeah, you got to wait for him to get to 100 be like, hey, 100 yeah. wins for Chris Yeah, Fitch. exactly. You got you to let the media discover that one. You can't yeah, really you can't, promote you that. Can, you I can't think do Luke that. Walden had more wins than that as interim coach of the Warriors. <laughs> he that might have. Yeah, I think he did. Right? Um but literally at fast in one <laughs> stint, right? So if I could give some advice to the second winningest coach in Timberwolves history, who's been on the job two and a half years, um, I would say use Carl Anthony Towns like he's like a Clay Thompson or, you know, a guy to space the floor instead of a star. Like a Kevin Love, right? Like, like a, yeah, like, yeah, a little more than a Kevin Love. I mean, Kevin Love just stand on the perimeter and shoot. That's all you, that's pretty much what he does. Yeah. I like, <laughs> Stagger it to where you could use Carl Anthony Towns as Carl Anthony Towns when Gobert's not in the game. But man, like he should be taking 10 threes a game. Easy. Easy 10 threes a game. Otherwise, it looks like that constipation they had in the first 10, 15 games of the season, whatever that was. Because that was. I don't know if he should be taking shots away from Tori and Prince, though, man. Last time I saw You know what? That's true. Miss a shot. (laughs) That he was man, Tory Prince was hot. Bro, ruined was crazy. Ruined 57 from Julius Randle. It felt ruined like he ruined like Julius Randle's mental health at the end mm-hmm. of that game. Yeah, too. that wasn't My good. Goodness. That wasn't that was good. Not... That's... Like, hey, somebody grabbed I hope somebody tapped him on the shoulder was like, hey, bro, you all right? Is there anybody in the NBA who's more tired during games than Julius Randle? It Kevon like he... Looney. <laughs> it looked like Julius yeah, but that's actually working at both ends. His body in the that's actually working at both ends. I know. <laughs> you, like, you know, Tyler just... walks away from the jump ball with both hands on his hips. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's going to do it for this week's point of contention. Thanks for listening. Make sure to subscribe to all the podcasts on the Athletic Podcast Network. Warriors plus minus anything is potable. Down to dunk, no dunks, glue guys, sixes beat, and the Bun and Cardigan show for. Will Guillory for Marcus Thompson for Andrew Select. I'm Zach Harper. See you next time. And hey, subscribe to the bounce.